The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests, and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, or its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Camping Show. I'm Bianca Cahew. It's Wednesday, July 20th, 82 degrees in my neck of the woods. Tonight's episode of The Camping Show is brought to you by Campground Views, making camping easier. Also, Rutabaga Paddle Sports, providing time on the water. Tonight's episode is Pragus Outfitters BWCA Summer Update 2022 with my special guest, Drew Brockett. What's up, Drew? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. How's it going in your neck of the woods? That's perfect. Wonderful. Uh, good, good, good. You know the about a ballpark temperature, about what it's like up there? Yeah, we might be up to about 80 today, and that's pretty warm up here 80 yeah 82 degrees it's uh breezy you know the summer breeze you can't beat it and it's not humid so i'll take it over anything <laughs> <laughs> all right chicago native drew brockett is the outfitting manager at pragus northwoods company in ely minnesota in his free time drew takes advantage of all the many benefits of the boundary waters canoe area has to offer like fishing canoeing camping and a number of other outdoor adventuring activities you know i've just been hearing all summer boundary waters boundary waters and i talked to one of my girlfriends last month and and i was you know texting her she's like sorry i can't get any service i'm in the boundary waters or something like that and i'm like boundary waters where is that <laughs> so like i keep hearing it now i've got you on so it's great so you're definitely gonna have to fill me in on all of the uh the details of the boundary waters and what it has to offer definitely i mean it's amazing this is canoe country of the world so uh no roads pure wilderness you know moose wolves black bear all sorts of stuff eagles uh, loons Oh, it's it definitely is, an escape. It's, like it's, that. The, it's the place to paddle canoes. That's what it is. It's amazing. So, where, where you're stationed right now, are you located rurally or are you close to town? Yeah, so we're in Ely. Uh, we're an outfitter in Ely. And when we just, we just okay. uh, send people out to all the entry points of the Boundary Waters to start their trips. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Have the number of bookings been consistent this year compared to, let's say, last year? Yeah, this is a busy place um, for canoers. Uh, it is a, a permit monitored place. So it's not like a ton of people can go in every day. There's a limit, but it is busy from the standpoint of the permits are taken quite a bit. It's a, it's a very popular busy place for canoers who like the wilderness and quiet solitude. And so how do you base the limit and what is the limit of people that can be on the boundary waters? Yeah, so the Forest Service over the years has come up with, uh, you know, to get into the Boundary Waters, there's entry points throughout the, the wilderness. And each one has a certain amount of permits per day. And it's based on the number of campsites in that area that they've created and, and that kind of thing. It's really about okay. that. You know, if there's a ton of campsites, they can have more permits. If it's hardly any, they got to have a low amount. I mean, it all depends. And as far as applying for permits, how soon can you do that? to get, you know, like an ideal camp spot that you're looking to get? Yeah, so every year the permits open up on the last Wednesday of January. So the early planners that's should get in on that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the best time to get mm -hmm. your permit because it opens up, you can get what you want. Okay. From then on, it's open all the time continuously. So okay. like right now we can get permits for any day the rest sure. of the opening. Sure. And because you never know, you know, with what cancellations you get, you know, people make plans, sometimes they fall mm -hmm. through. So I'm sure there are plenty of openings then throughout the summer. Pretty cool. Yeah. You recently added a new building at Pragas. Tell us about that. Yeah. So uh, not only we're an outfitter, but we're also a, a, a pretty big canoe dealer for uh, Winona and North Star Canoes, as well as a bunch okay. of kayaks. 
And because of that part of the business, we opened up a new building across the street. And it is the canoe barn, uh, the canoe warehouse and the boat house, we call it. And uh, we have our canoe salesmen over there selling items that are associated with the paddling as well as the canoes and kayaks. So we're pretty excited about it. It's a beautiful building. Awesome. And more more employees, more employment. So it's great yeah. for the community. All right. And so um, what type of feedback have you received so far this year from those returning from their trips? And um, in, in your experience, if you've been out there this summer, what has it been like? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, I have to jump to last year. Last year, we had some fires that uh, created a lot of smoke and some closures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This year, and also a drought last year, so there was low, low water. Okay. Well, this, this year, we started with extremely high water. So there was plenty of water out there and there's no fires. So it's kind of the opposite. So uh, people are having a great time. If, if they are trippers every year, they're coming back saying, hey, no smoke and uh, the water's great. We don't have to you know, walk extra miles because of the portage is being dry or something. So uh, it's been great. It's been a great summer overall. They're, they're loving it. Yeah, the fires are in London right now. I can't believe what's going on with that. But it's just, you know, those hot temperatures and, and the drought is uh, definitely what contributes to things like that. So um, it's great, you know, and I think, um, you know, we were talking about booking um, comparisons and things like that. And I think um, this year especially it's been um, a little bit more open as far as things to do, you know, kind of. Uh, grasping our way out of the pandemic, if you will. So it's like, I think people have been more comfortable to start getting out there and doing things again. Uh, agreed. Um, you know, during the, the COVID situation last uh, two and a half years now, uh, the outdoors was a big place for everybody to go with the yeah. fresh air and space and stuff like that. And it, it has continued. Yeah. So the last two years, this year, it's, it's a place to come. And, um, you know, get away from everything else in the crowds. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, I think, I think we can um, give credit to the pandemic in that sense where it's just kind of opened everybody's eyes and, you know, we've kind of figured out the places that we can go to, which is, uh, you know, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere, you know, no civilization. And, you know, it just kind of opens up your mind to what really matters and things like that. So, um, how does the permit system work for booking a trip to BWCA? Yeah, so again, the permits are, uh, every entry point has a certain amount of permits per day. For a permit, you have to know the date and which entry point, and then you have to have a leader with their all their information. Um, and uh, in the Boundary Waters, you can only have a permit that's up to nine people and four canoes or four watercraft. Okay. So that's a, there is a limit now you can have two people in one boat of course you know but anything lower than that so there's a limit to that um so there are and there's a lot of rules that go along with the permits so. and i know you mentioned you have to have a leader so is that a leader within your group or do you have to have um what do you, what do you mean by that yeah so what i mean is when you have a permit you somebody grabs the permit they have it you know like it'd be under your name beyond sure that, okay your, your address and all that you have to have a, a the permit leader and maybe an alternate leader. They're the only ones who can sign a permit. So I won't get too detailed about the signing of the permit, but it, I mean, it's important to have the, the correct people who are gonna be coming for sure because they need to sign the permit. So there's there's some details in there that are important, um, but that's what I mean by that. There's, a, there's gonna be like, a, we call it a group leader who signs the permit. Gotcha. All right, everybody stick around for more of the camping show. We will be right back after this on W4CY radio and talk for TV after these messages stick around. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground Views Virtual Tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground Views Virtual Tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. 
How long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga Outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. And we're back to the camping show on Talk 4 TV and WC4Y Radio. Chris, tell me, I'm sorry, Drew, <laughs> tell me, are there any restrictions that have been implemented or lifted in the BWCA since last year? Yeah, at this point, no. Well, let me change that. that last year, they did. They were forcing you at the latter half of the season to, to hang your food. They made okay. it mandatory. Uh, that got dropped over the winter and now you don't have to do that it's still recommended for the because of the black the black bears but um they have not um uh, no no major restrictions right now obviously follow the rules of the boundary waters but uh no restrictions from that kind of a standpoint sure and so as far as like location for what's what are some of the prime spots around the boundary waters for camping would you say yeah, I mean, everybody's going to have their favorite place. There's so yeah. <laughs> many places. And that's one of the reasons people come back. There's so many entry points. They want to hit a lot of them and try different routes. Okay. So it's not just going to, like, the same, uh, you know, campground every year. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, but you know what I mean? Sure. This, you can really change it up and uh, just go to different places all the time. So everybody has their, their favorite places. You know, it's hard to hmm. really tell you they're real specific. I mean, I have my pl favorite places, certain entry points. Some are easier, some are harder. Yeah, you know, there's a whole mix to, to get the right, to fit the right uh, trip in for the, the sure, <laughs> sure. Just just depends what you're doing, what you plan yeah. on doing, and your situation, and all mm -hmm. those things. So, um, as far as somebody that's never gone to the Boundary Waters, let's say for me, for example, what would you say would be? Um, are there any site you said that there are sites that are harder to get into or easier? What would you recommend for a first timer? Yeah, I would definitely work with an outfitter. Um, okay. that's, what, that's what we do at Paragus. We, we talk to people all year, all winter about their trip. And okay. for first timers, they're not going to know what they, they see the list of permits and they're not going to know what, what that is, you know? So we can talk to them about the route and that's, you really want to get some ex expert advice about where to go. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you might choose the wrong route and we can help you with the perfect route for your first time. So you're not going to kill yourself. You're going to enjoy yourself, that kind of thing. So, you know, definitely get some expert advice to start the process. And what are some major differences with camping along the boundary waters versus um, just your typical out in the woods camping? Well, it's spread out. That's one thing. I mean, the boundary waters is quite spread out. You do there are designated campsites in the boundary waters put out by the the, the forest services there, or uh, they've made them and they um, they're on the map. So when you're using the map, but there's a latrine back in the woods of every campsite. There's also a, a fire grate at every campsite. And those are the places you have to stay and camp. Um, but the main thing is just more of the solitude and quiet. And the, and uh, we have, you know, the night sky here um, mm -hmm. is incredibly dark. So it's, uh, you know, just a great place to see the sky at night. Uh, it's, it's the quiet and stuff like that compared to maybe places that are near roads or something. I mean, you yeah. can paddle out and be many, many miles from anybody and, and cars and noise. So it's amazing. Definitely. And so you you have to be prepared for emergencies, you know, if you can't get to certain places and you're out too deep into, you know, the area where you're at. So that's definitely um, a lot of preparation that you might have to do for a specific spot. Very much so. Yeah. And let's talk about the options of hiring a guide for a trip. I know you mentioned um, the outfitters. What type of services do a guide provide? And also, what should you not expect your guide to do? Yeah, I mean, a guide is a great way. A lot of people who are new uh, do hire a guide because they can learn a ton of stuff, whether it be cooking, camping, following the rules of the Boundary Waters, um, in navigation, paddling strokes, all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's a great way to learn. Um, 
and you can do it for the first time and then start doing it yourself. Or we have people who come back every year and hire a guide because they just enjoy that. Um, so the guide will do a ton of stuff and kind of take control of everything, the safety issues, you know, the cooking and cleaning. However, it, you, you should not expect the guide to just do every single thing. It, it should be a hands-on experience for everybody. Yeah. You know, you should not just sit in your chair and let that guy just do every single thing. Hmm. You really want to be a part of this experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's the main thing. You know, don't let the guy just do everything you sit in a yes. chair. <laughs> yeah, it's not a camping butler. It's right. it's a guide, yep. you know, keyword guide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. Definitely. And, and I have to go back to uh, my girlfriend's experience because she said, you know, she said she was in the boundary waters. And so uh, she does my hair. So I went to her salon. And so I asked her, you know, tell me about your experience. She goes, oh, my God, it's a beautiful place. But it was terrible for us because we were not prepared. And she went into detail about the many ways that she was washing my hair. And I'm thinking like, wow, she should have gotten an outfitter. And people don't think about those things. They think, OK, it's just camping, you know, just a different place. I know what to do. I know what to bring. You know, a lot of people bring their dehydrated foods, all of those things. They think they're prepared and then, you know, something happens and they're not prepared and they don't know what to do and they have to go back into town for things and stuff like that. So um, there are benefits to having an outfitter and I've never had one, but I know that if I was going to the backwaters, I would definitely there. There would just be no way for a girl like me, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a great way to learn, like I said, and, um, you know, there's you can't just, you know, there's not a store around the corner, you know, you need to bring yeah. everything, you need to watch the weight because you have to carry everything. Yeah, the prepared is a big deal. And um, it's the first time and every other time, technically, you learn a ton. And you just keep learning all the time and you learn that you don't need that, and you need, but you need something else. So um, you learn a lot. And it's a great way to just start with a guide or at least working with an outfitter. Um, so there's some correlation between, you know, going camping and that people do in a car and stuff. However, this is a, this is a different animal up here with uh, all the portages, you know, carrying everything between from lake to lake to lake, you know, stuff like that. There's, there's a lot of work involved. This is definitely not jumping in a river and letting the, the, the canoe just flow down the river. I mean, you're paddling. You have to move the boat yourself and um, carry everything and stuff. So it's a lot, of, a lot of work, but it's very, very satisfying. Yeah, and, it, and it's a guide for a reason. They're there, they're there for a reason because you just never know. And as far as the guides, how much does it cost? And what specifically, I know we talked about the things that guides don't do. What will the guide do for you? And what are those uh, main benefits? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is just to, to teach people the right thing to do up here in this wilderness it's a very special wilderness but again all those tricks whether it be fishing you know um, setting up camp cooking cleaning canoe uh, paddling strokes and uh, carrying the canoe how to carry that a lot of people have trouble with that so there's just so much they can help with um, and uh, again we, we send guides out all the time um, so that tells you that people want them uh, I do think the majority of people don't take a guide overall uh, in terms of the number of everybody who goes to the boundary waters. But overall, uh, there's still a, a nice amount of people who take guides and they're they're learning a ton and then they, you can do it yourself in the future. How many guides do you have? You know, it's it's kind of a mix. We have a handful for ourselves at ourselves here at Paragus, but we also have a whole bunch we can reach out to who are, I guess you'd call them like independent contractors okay. who just can work for anybody. There's like kind of regular guides up here. So it's, there's a there's a bunch, you know, so we use but we have a handful we really like to use. Specifically, how would you accommodate someone that doesn't own any equipment, has no paddling experience uh, that wants to book a canoe trip the backwaters? Yeah. So, you know, that's where the guide would come into play so that you, you can really learn. But um, we can supply everything. We call it a full outfitting trip where we supply all the food. Um, most of the gear so it makes it super easy for people yeah. so we you know we have people coming from all over the world and um, in fact we have two people right now who are out back from belgium and they're going through a full outfitting they're using all our food and our gear and um so you you can really uh get set up here you only have to bring a few things 
to, to make it easy for yourself. Hmm. And then you've got all the good gear and you don't have to worry about it, that kind of thing. So that's awesome. You know, like an all inclusive. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can go full outfitting or partial. If you if you have stuff and you just need a few things, great. You know, for us, we'll just do whatever you need. I know this is probably not a big deal when it comes to camping, but you mentioned food. You want to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, so, you know, we don't just send you out with full on dehydrated stuff. Um, <laughs> however, we do a mix. We have a menu on our website. You, you get to choose what you want for the for the trip. And it's a mix. It can be fresh stuff and some dehydrated, depending on how long your trip is, as well as how much you want actually want to cook. You know, obviously, the, the fresh stuff and whatever might take longer and more dishes and stuff like that. Some people don't want to do that. So they want to have some dehydrated. So it's a whole mix um, in terms of what you can choose. Uh, we, we understand people want fresh stuff. Great. We'll offer it to you. So, you know, some people just have their favorites and want to do that kind of thing or make it super, super easy and just boil water. So <laughs> And protein powder. Water That's and it. protein powder. <laughs> yeah. All right. More of the camping show in just a little bit. We're going to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back on W4CY radio and talk for TV. Stick around after these messages. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's virtual tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. A few years ago, someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. And we're back on the camping show with my very special guest, Drew Brockett. All right, Juan, let's have you put up Drew's photos and we'll have him tell us about each of them. This is my favorite part. I love visuals. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. So, you know, it's just the pristine boundary waters I and mean, it's the super fresh water and just look at the beauty. I mean, it's just it's incredible. And uh, like they say, it's the canoe capital of the world. This is the place to paddle canoes and camp in a wilderness. That's awesome. And just can we, can we go back to the first picture? I, I the, is that does that little island right there sitting there? Does that have a name? Uh, no. Well, maybe, but that's just <laughs> some sort of little island. There's so there's so many islands out there, Bianca. I couldn't even tell you. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> it reminds me actually of a very similar view we have back at home at Star Rock State Park. It's called Lover's Leap, and it, it's very high, just as that picture is. And you're just looking over the Illinois River, so it kind of reminds <laughs> me of that, but not the big old island right in the middle. That's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> And this is just a group that we sent out um, and you can see the tarp set up, you know, people have fun setting up tarps and setting up camp, uh, really technical like this. Uh, this particular one is one of our trips that has one of your guests you have quite a bit. Uh, Cliff Jacobson is the guy sitting right in the middle and he's one of your guests you have. And he does a trip for us every year uh, when he's when he's able to. But anyway, that's just uh, one way to set up tarps out there and a typical campsite there, you know, with some uh, logs around a fire and granite rock and it's just amazing, so. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's quite the tent too. 
Yeah, that was a that was a tarp setup that was pretty special there. Well, so, <laughs> yeah, this is this is technically from last year, this particular shot, but it was yeah. part of the fires we had. You can see, wow. I mean, it's, it's something that's you gotta watch it. You know? How long did the fires last? I know we didn't get into that. If, if we could keep that photo up, Juan. Um, what was the extent of the damage and how long did the the, the blaze last? Yeah, so this this fire, um, uh, I'm not going to quite remember how long it was, but it was a while. Um, this was just outside the Bonder Waters to the south. And um, it shut down some roads. And then eventually, because we had so much south wind for some reason, it, it blew into the Bonder Waters in terms of the smoke. And uh, it caused a lot of you know pit problems for, for people breathing, in a sense. You know, it, yeah, just, it was uncomfortable. Um, but it was uh, definitely over a month and uh, lots of activity down south uh, east of Ely. And uh, you know, obviously pretty crazy. You can drive right by it, through it where it crossed the road right now this year and see how what happened. Wow. Yeah. And it did, you know, just the, the visibility, I'm sure where the roads are from, you know, just outside of those woods, I'm sure were very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just phenomenal, the effects of wildfires and what they can do with our climate. I know, I think, I'm not sure if I remember it was last year or the year before that, but the wildfires um, down in Canada and California, we had here in Illinois, overcast skies for days just because of the smoke so it's it's definitely um it's it's interesting what it can do to the climate definitely yeah and the smoke can travel a long way like you said you know yeah so. it's it's phenomenal there there are several several outfitters excuse me there in ely why choose paragus outfitters what that this is the question uh, what does Paragus <laughs> outfitters do that stands out above and beyond all the competitive <laughs> outfitters <laughs> Yeah, well, honestly, one of the reasons is we love what we do here. Um, we are passionate about this place, protecting it as well as just getting people out there to paddle. Uh, but so, you know, customer service is a big deal. We uh, we are there for you the whole time. Um, we're also extremely well known for our gear. We have top notch gear. It's brand new all the time. So you, uh, you're getting new stuff. You don't have to worry about it. Um, for instance, our whole fleet of canoes is new every season. Nobody, no other outfitter does that. So, wow. um, we it's it's the gear and the people you, you work with. Um, you know, you can you can just talk to me anytime. You know, give me a call and I'll talk to you. So, yeah, but we we're on email and talking to people all the time, getting getting them ready. We're very detailed oriented, so we take take care of that too. Great. So. Is canoes the only watercraft you can rent out, or what are some other options if you have any? Yeah, we do rent some kayaks, and we do rent paddle boards. Okay. Um, and a lot of times people, you know, there's a lot of cabins around here outside the Boundary Waters on lakes. So people will just rent things like that, too, and bring them to their cabins. Gotcha. Um, kayaks aren't ideal in the Boundary Waters. There are people who do it, but it's they're a little harder to pack as well as portage. So that's why it is called the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. Canoes make more sense, but we yeah. do rent other things besides gear and the canoes and uh, there are some paddle boards and uh, can, our kayaks. So the, the paddle boards, um, how would you use that on the boundary waters? <laughs> well, yeah, they see, that's the thing. Uh, you know, it's, I guess they might bring it along so they can have it around camp, that kind of thing. Sure. However, because paddle boards have gotten so popular over the last, yeah. whatever, five years or whatever it is, uh, yeah. there have actually been people who do a canoe trip on a paddle, a canoe trip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they'll put their gear on there, and they'll. There's been you can dot you can see a documented you know video about that. Uh, people who've actually done a boundary waters trip on a paddleboard. That's crazy. Just to say they did it. I just yeah. like, here, look at me. I'm different. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a different way to do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna cue back to those photos. Juan says we have a couple more to show. Oh, that's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, just look at the beauty. It's it's incredible, and it's all uh, most of the lakes are silent, meaning no motorboats. There's a few motorboat lakes out there, but there's million a million acres of uh, just quiet, and you're just moving yourself. It's just hmm. incredible. Look at the beauty. Wow. Beautiful overcast day. Mm -hmm. Can't beat it. Everybody should experience it, that's for sure. Um, I mean... That's the fire grade at every campsite. It's wow, that's a beautiful setup. I love the the use of the rocks. That's really yes. nice. 
yeah, that thing is that uh, grate is kind of buried in the rock, so to speak. And um, that's where you can have your fire. If you if you cook on a fire, that's where you'll cook. Obviously, you can bring camp stoves with as well. Uh, but uh, you know, just you're going to be overlooking the water, and it's just a, what a great way to experience the evening and hang around the fire and just I mean, look just look out of the water and watch the loons or beavers swim by or something. It's amazing. It's just wow. an incredible place. Well, what are the more common uh, animals that you'll see? out along the water yeah i mean you're probably going to see uh, almost everybody would probably see a loon uh which is a obviously a fun bird um you know beavers can be seen quite often um you get lucky if you see a wolf or a, a moose a black bear you know hopefully you don't see it in camp but they're out there um at bald eagles um you know otters they're out there so those are you know those are some of the main ones um that's another thing. It's just a special place up here in northern Minnesota. We have that kind of uh, variety of animals. Yeah. Uh, kind of a typical campsite back there in the woods, just off of some granite rock, and you kind of spread out in there. And uh, if you can see that down in the middle section there. Um, really nice. And it's so secluded. So. Mm -hmm. As far as access to these campsites, so is there like a, a main center when you're, when you go to the BWCA, is there a main center in Pragas Outfitters that you would go to and then do you hike to your campsite, do you drive to your campsite, or does it depend based off of, you know, how far it is? What, it, what does that look like? Well, the campsites are certainly, uh, you got to paddle there and that's, and you got to get to the, you know, you got to paddle there with okay. the canoe. So, um, you know, you're going to drive to the entry point and then you start walking and portaging and paddling back and forth to that. And um, depending on where you are, each campsite or each lake has a certain amount of campsites. Okay. You know, it could be one, it could be 10, 20, you know, it depends on the site, but uh, sure. really lake. Okay. But yeah, it's great. Uh, that happens to be me. <laughs> um, just cooking up some walleye underneath the tarp wow. there. Um, I usually do my trips with my uncle, and we okay. uh, like to just hang out and cook some fish and you know, have some good meals under a tarp and just enjoy the evening. And nice. Best. And is that is that a stick holding up the tarp in the middle? Yeah, I've got the tarp, mm -hmm. you know, tied up on the corners. But then to keep that that middle up, I, had, I found a nice stick to just kind of hang it up a bit Neat. so I sit there <laughs> that's a true outdoorsman <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you know again you can just see you have to bring everything you know so you need to yeah. have everything organized and be prepared so you can see we got all sorts of packs there a food pack a gear pack and you know it's, you just have to be ready for everything that's why going with an outfitter or at least looking at their gear list is a huge deal like we have a gear list on our website which helps a lot of people plan a trip so they know what they need to bring, or at least don't forget your headlamp, you know, because you didn't have it on a list. We That's have ours, awesome. obviously. You know. Lot, lots of uh, free, valuable resources on your website. It sounds like correct. Yes. Um, Beautiful. That just happens to be through that fire um, at the end okay. of last year. Yeah, I do see the trees on it, the left-hand side. Yeah, it jumped over the fire. The uh, this is when they reopened the, the road and uh, okay. went down last fall to check it out. So. Um, something it'll be interesting to watch the forest regenerate itself. Yeah. You know, sometimes the forest needs fires. It just gives it that, uh, something, something in the, in the ash that makes yeah. trees develop and, and, and grow new. It's, it's wild, beautiful. Yeah. They say a fire makes the, you know, a healthy forest. It is part of the forest, you know, so we happen to have them here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is just another incredible view. Yeah, great um, view. Another lake. Uh, some campsites are right next to the water. Some are up above. Uh, this one happens to be above the water. You have to kind of climb up a little path. And um, yeah, just a beautiful view. Um, this happens to be a lake called Possum Lake. And uh, I mean, you can't beat it. You can just relax, you know. Sometimes the bugs are out. You got to watch that. You be, again, be prepared. Um, but uh, just can you imagine just sitting there in a little yeah. lightweight camp chair and just relaxing with a cup of hot chocolate so or something? These certain viewpoints that are photographed here, are there uh, trails that you can go along to, to see this or is just just very... Um... Yeah, I mean, this, for instance, this one uh, happens to be... Uh, 
like this, this campsite is up above the water quite a bit. And you see that you can pull the canoe into a place where most people pull it in, then you walk a path and carry all your stuff up to the campsite. Okay. So again, every campsite is a little different, whether it be really close to where you put the canoe or you have to walk a little bit. You never have to walk forever, you know, nothing like that. But um, sometimes you have to carry your stuff at the campsite, you know, 20 yards, you know, a little longer than that too. But Okay. Well, no, that's, like that's Paragus North Woods right there. That's where I work. Wow. Um, that's the building. We have a retail, a big retail store, very popular place in town to to come here and, and get your last minute shopping or books or anything. We have an online catalog as part of this called the BoundaryWatersCatalog.com. Um, also, there's a restaurant associated with us, uh, right, kind of right in the middle there. It's called the Chocolate Moose. Oh. So kind, of, kind of a fun name with uh, really good food there. So. Nice. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to eat there? Yeah, I, I like burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they make nice burgers there. So <laughs> after after a weekend of camping, a nice burger sounds like the perfect thing. Oh, yeah. As much as you like being out in the woods and stuff, when you come back, there's something about getting a plated burger or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Something <laughs> something hearty. That's right. <laughs> That uh, happens to be one of our catalog covers, called, again, the Boundary Waters catalog, and uh, that happens to be Steve Paragas, the owner of the company. Wow. He was out catching uh, lake trout one day, and there you go. So. Okay, that's tr that's really big. Yeah, that's, that looks like a good, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, um, it almost looked like a bass, and I'm no uh, connoisseur of fish, but <laughs> it looks pretty big to me. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a nice one, that's for sure. So a lot of people fish up here, as you can imagine. It's great fishing. Yeah. That is pretty cool. That walleye. Oh my goodness. I'm not too big on fish. I'm just kind of like a salmon person. I actually had salmon earlier today, but walleye. Oh my goodness. And cod. Cod is amazing. Oh, cod's great. I like it too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that was the last photo. Drew, what advice would you offer those still thinking about doing a trip to the B BWCA this mm -hmm. summer? So there's still some time left. What do you say? Yeah, it's it's really about sooner the better. Uh, permits are going there. Um, you need a you need an overnight camping permit for the Bounty Waters that that you pay for through September 30th. So if you're going to do that, you need to do it sooner than later. Uh, as again, they're getting tight. Um, after October 1st, you don't need to have a re reserved permit. It's all self issue and it's free. You still okay. follow, follow the rules and all that. However, now you're getting into where we start to turn our weather. Um, you could It could snow. It could be 70. You know, you have to be ready for anything in October. And sure. we start to freeze up in later October. So, um, And why do, you, why do you make that cut in October to then make it uh, free? You know, the, that's where the Forest Service uh, just has designated it. The, this, the uh, Boundary Waters paying permits are May 1 through September 30th. Gotcha. And that's okay. just what it is, uh, kind of the main canoeing season. And then October 1st through uh, uh, April 30th, I guess, um, that would be, it's again, free. Cause there are people who go out there in the winter time and they yeah. uh, snowshoe and cross country ski and, and uh, do there's dog sledding companies. And uh, so there's a lot to do even in the winter. Sure. But it's kind of like a, at your own risk <laughs> type Definitely. of thing. Yeah, and it can be cold up here. I'll tell you that, really cold. <laughs> so what type of, let's talk about, I know you said it can be cold. What other conditions can you experience from season to season? So we are at coming towards the end of July. So let's say uh, somebody wants to make a trip in August, maybe September. Is it going to be buggy? Is that the time where the bugs start to kind of uh, go away? What is that going to look like? Yeah, so the bugs have been pretty bad this year because of all the water. And uh, the bug season kind of starts to calm down a little bit, I should say, usually, as we get later into August. And then uh, as you get into September, they even, it's even better for bugs, meaning no bugs or less okay. bugs. Less. Okay. So, and, but then you get into the seasons. Like now we're going to be in our hottest time coming up here in early August where people like to go jump in the lake. It's, it's as warm as it gets up here. We never get warm water, but it helps with all the heat we've had. And then, you know, you have, the, you have this, the beautiful fall colors that happen in mid to late and early October, mid to late September and early October. 
and the colors up here are amazing just to be out in a canoe and camp out there in that kind of weather. Yeah. So um, you, you, you get the bug season and then you get the colors and no bugs. It's a, I mean, it's all over the place up here, but there are, you know, the first half of the season is the buggier time. Sure, definitely. Yeah, it's uh, still buggy here. And I know towards the end of the summer, it's like the gnats get angry. It's like their time to die. So they start biting everything and anything. And so when I go out there towards the end of the summer, it's just like, okay, I know that's the end of the summer because the gnats just start to get really angry and mad about life. So I'm just like, I don't like to go out during that time. But, you know, it. my fiance and I, we we would do and we haven't done it this year because we'll be getting married this year but we we love to do an annual colorado trip and i'm not sure if you're familiar um with places in colorado or camping sites but we would camp somewhere in lyons colorado so that's right outside of i believe that would be going into estes park but we would go during um around this time i'd say um about the first first week of august and so it's just it's gorgeous less bugs um it's still hot very dry but obviously if you go up into the mountains which i learned very quickly that uh there's snow and the climate changes and i did not know that so i brought all of this stuff like a short a hiking shorts and these tank tops and sports bras and come to find out and my my fiance is giving me the shirt off his back and now all the clothes and it's it's cold up there so you know like you said it's you got to go out there and experience it and i think that first timers you know what they can take from this is that in you know don't knock it it's it is it can be daunting and you know especially when you talk about uh, recommending a guide, you think, well, you know, if I need a guide, you know, this must be crazy. Well, you know, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna live and learn and you're gonna find a better plan for next time. And you're just going to gain that experience. And, um, it's, it's definitely worth it. I would say. Yeah. You know, you just said the word experience, big, big thing. You know, you, the, we have people who've been here for 40 trips. And then you have your first timers. Well, you just get experience. You start to learn how to do it, what to bring, you know, how to travel, how to be safe, and uh, be prepared. And it's uh, it's about experience up here, but uh, also having a great experience yeah. uh, up here, watching the sunset and watch the sunrise, and it's amazing. Definitely, and I think you know you talk about what your guides have to offer, and you know you, what what they would do specifically for the campers, and I think that you know there are specific roles and things like that but also making sure that the campers have a good time is is very important and i think that you know that's it's very pivotal you know with your first time and a couple of times and just depending on uh where you go in the backwaters uh to to have a guide because you want you want it to be worth it you're going out there and you want to have a good experience and and that's what a guide can offer. So I know that if I, I were going out there and I had a guide, I'd be pretty confident I would have a good time. And I'm, I'm not going to lose my head out there. I'm not going to be stranded because I have somebody at least who knows what they're doing. Agreed. They're going to make sure you have a great time as, as well as doing all the other things we talked about. But they're going to make sure you have a good time. And, uh, you know, even we also want to get the kids up here. So we get families with, you know, younger kids. We got to get the kids going to get yeah. enjoying the wilderness and get off their phones and stuff. And um, so they make sure uh, the kids have a good time. You got to and you pick the route that the kids will be OK on. So, you know, we got to get kids into the wilderness. That's for sure. Yeah, we'll definitely. Get the waters or anywhere. Are there any programs that Pragus Outfitters has for the kids? Um, anything specific that would be appealing to families in those regards? Uh, we don't have any specific uh, things that we do. However, we definitely just promote, bring your family up here, bring your kids yeah. up here. You know, we can find the correct camp uh, or Boundary Waters route for you. So, you know, we want to get them hands on and just sh see what it's all about up here. Yeah, yeah. Pass down the knowledge, pass down the experience, because it just seems like this generation is just all about the the screens. Yes. And so it's i uh, I'm a big stickler about like, if I ever had kids and, you know, I say that, so I don't have kids. So, you know, I, I don't know. So don't listen to me, but, but, you know, it's, it, I think things like that are important and, you know, it's uh, it builds, builds good character for the kids. And then that's, what's important. And they, they have a good experience with that. 
Agreed. Yeah. They, you know, we, we had so many kids coming back. They just had such a ball, whether they caught their first fish or at least their biggest fish. Yeah. And they, they'll just, Hey, we saw a beaver go by our campsite and they slap its tail. I mean, it's just things like that that really get them going and they just want to come back. And, and, you know, and I think that sometimes surprises parents because, you know, their day to day, you don't think that, you know, the kids want to do something like that. They're, you know, they've got their school, they've got their, you know, their screen time, they've got their games, their, you know, their Fortnite, their Minecraft and things like that. But then you get them out there and they're having a good time. And I remember this kind of happened with my best friend. She took her kids down to where I live. She's from Bridgeport in Chicago. She lives right by the White Sox Stadium. And she brought her kids down here, Starved Rock State Park. We have a couple state parks, Buffalo Rock in Ottawa, Starved Rock State Park, and Matheson State Park. So we've got beautiful waterfalls, beautiful canyons, all coming off of um, water from the Vermilion River, the Illinois River. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's, it's, um, it's a great place. So she brought the kids and, you know, being from... Chicago and being from the city and you just should have seen their faces. It was it's just awesome to see the kids, just the smiles on their faces. And, and I'll tell you, um, AJ was my, my best friend's son. He was just, just loving just being in the grass and being just around and being in the outdoors. And he was just rolling around, you know, being a seven year old boy. And it was, it's good to see it. <laughs> you know, they get it out of their system. That's great. That sounds like a good thing. And, same thing just get them out in the woods you know get them away from the tv yeah. and whatever and just uh they they're gonna find out there's so much more to the world so in, it's a in wilderness yeah great escape drew last question have you been out on the boundary waters yet yourself just to to do a little solo camping trip or, or something at your leisure not not where you're actually working yeah i, I try to get out um a little tough I have a lot to do here for my job, but uh, I absolutely get out. I've been paddling a bunch this year. I haven't done an overnighter yet, but that's okay. That'll come uh, when I get some more time. But uh, getting out there just even for a day trip is is so fun, you know, getting yeah. up at dawn and going. So I've been, I'm out there and I've traveled all over the place to help you with routing and stuff like that. Nice. So nice. yeah, I love it. Take advantage of it. That's awesome. You still got plenty of time. Drew, where can our viewers and listeners go to follow Practice Outfitters and most importantly, book a trip to the BWCA? <laughs> yeah, so you can go to uh, paragus.com. Uh, P I. Uh, there you go. It's on there. Uh, perfect. Uh, we have <laughs> Thanks, tons, tons of in information about canoe tripping, the boundary waters, all sorts of stuff. And then we also, from that website, have our link to our uh, boundary waters catalog. So in case you need some gear, you know, we will ship it around the country. So that kind of thing. So take a look. We have a ton of stuff. It's a lot of fun. People love our website. They just say we it came to you because we like what you have there. So check it out. It's a fun website to get involved. With. Yeah, Very yeah, definitely. CW and I were we were trying to plan a boundary waters and we can't do it this year, unfortunately, but we're definitely going to do something Good. next year. So we will have to steal you maybe for a day and, and <laughs> hang out and maybe do a live broadcast or something like that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Drew, for being my guest on the camping show. It was a pleasure. You were awesome. I learned so much and I feel um, ready to do something like that myself next year. I'd also like to thank our sponsors for bringing you tonight's show, Campground Views, and also Rutabaga Paddle Sports. Be sure to tune in for next week's broadcast from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Lady Climbers Rock Brazil with special guest Maya Murzoki. Until then, thank you for tuning in to The Camping Show. I'm Bianca K. Hugh, reminding you, learn more, do more. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.